Yo, Elliot, I have a question about the cosmic clock in terms of how things unfold in our lives. I'm 21 years old, working 50 hours a week at a gas station. I dropped out of university last year, and at times I have doubts that I won't be able to make a good living without having certain connections, degrees, or certifications. I have many interesting goals for my future, but when I come back to reality, I feel like it's not being actualized to its fullest potential. I still live at home and hope to move out in the next couple of years. Just wanted to know what you think. So the very first thing uh, I want to address in terms of the cosmic clock, we've been talking a lot about this over the past few weeks, um, and there's a lot to be learned, and I've, I've, I've never given a full uh, discourse on what it means and, and how it works and the implication thereof, but it is a method, it is a, it is a map that I use to sort of better understand where I am and where the men are in my, li in, in my life, you know, my coaching programs are, and it, it, it doesn't give you exact answers, but it gives you a general idea. And so 21 is three years away from 24. 24 is when you hit the reset button in your life. 24 is a reset year, 12 is a reset year, 36 is a reset year, I think then comes 40, 47, and so on and so forth. Every 12 years is a reset. And leading up to that reset, you say you're 21, you've got a couple of years left, you are actually finishing out what has unfolded for the past 12 years, or, or for you, in your case, 10 years. And so what you're doing is you're wrapping things up, and as you're wrapping things up, you're looking into the future. And I know that's kind of normal and natural, but it, I, in, in your instance, in many instances for men that are, that are 21, 22, 23, even 24, uh, you're, you're spinning your wheels. You're trying to see something that you can't see. You're trying to get something that you can't get because that cycle hasn't started yet. You're finishing things up. You working 50 hours a week at this gas station is a conclusion to the past 12 years of your life. You're exactly where you need to be. And the number one piece of advice that I could give to any man at any age or any place on this clock or this map is you gotta be exactly where you are. You have to stay where you are and you gotta dominate where you are and you gotta do the best where you are and keep your eyes open and, and opportunity aware right where you are because where you are is where your opportunity is going to come from. I know that there are times we think we need to do something grand and there are times when you will be called to do something grand. But when you are living through the monotony of life, chopping wood and carrying water, and out of boredom or fear, we say, I got to shake things up and do something new. I got to do something grand you're getting in your own way. Just like Abraham, right? We've been talking a lot about Abraham because I'm studying Genesis with my children. Every time God makes Abraham a promise, God is, God is in, in, in your life and in my life, I think God works this way by giving us premonitions or giving us insight or dare I say a little bit of a psychic insight into what our lives are going to look like, what's going to, and so you say I have future goals and, and in, you have interests. I think interests are more important than goals. I have many interests, good then through those interests, your, your path may be revealed to you. But don't try to make your interest into something substantial. Be with your interest. Be with your work. Be with your interest. Don't push the river. There's no need to make anything spectacular happen. You've got to be fully present. Last week, I gave a long lecture on the difference between action and activity, and I even went deep, as deep as as you could into the archetypal world, the spiritual world as it relates to this. In fact, that video just went up yesterday. I think it's called When Working Hard Fails, right? Too much, too much. Right now, you need to tie up loose ends. You need to do what you didn't do, what you didn't get done. And if that means learning how to work 50 hours a week and, and toughening yourself up to that type of workload, then that's what you need to do. You're exactly where you need to be. Don't try to be anywhere else. Don't try to be somewhere that you're not. You got to be right there with your 50 hours a week. And you got to be right there with observing what's being placed in front of you, observing what interests draw you, observing what premonitions you have about your future and being grateful for that psychic insight or that revelation from God, if you will, being grateful for it, but not panicked about getting it. 
You got to be okay with where you are. So, 21 years old, you also say that I dropped out of university last year, had some doubts that I will be able to live a good life without having connections, degrees, or certification. Those are not things that you can never get again. You're 21, you're working at a gas station, guarantee you're gonna make connections. You know how many guys I know, I know a lot of guys that were personal trainers. They were struggling as personal trainers, but because they kept doing what they were doing, training people in the gym, I have two friends in particular I'm thinking about. They were doing what they were doing, training people in the gym, they made connections with clients that gave them loans to open their own gyms. Why? Because they were doing what they were doing right in front of them, and they were doing a good enough job that they were people magnetized to them that could bring their dreams into reality. You working at the gas station means you might make a connection. I don't know. Right? You don't know. Nobody knows. That very person that you need to connect with to take your life to the next level may very well be somebody that frequents your gas station. And one day, you're wearing a particular shirt that says something on it, or he is, and you say, hey, uh... What does that mean? And then he tells you what it means. And then you say, wow, that's very interesting. Can I learn more? And then he says, sure. Why don't you join me at this convention next week? Wow, sure. I'd love to. And then you go to the thing and then he shows you around and you meet a bunch of people and you realize, wow, there's a whole universe out here that I've just been exposed to because this small conversation I had with somebody at the gas station. That's how life works. It's called serendipity. If you're a Jungian, it's called grace. If you're a Christian, right? I'm not sure you can't be both, right? I like Carl Jung. Um, so serendipity, God's grace. I say God's grace. God will afford, it's God's grace comes when you're relaxed. Remember the story uh, about Abraham? I mean, I've been using Abraham as an example. I don't even want to go there right now. But when, when Abraham tries to make shit happen, Abraham screws things up. When Abraham relax or God like pushes him down and says, sit down, let me do it. God wants to do it. God wants to do it for you. Do you know that? God wants to do great things for you. Why does God want to do great things for you? There's a number of reasons. Number one, because he loves you, but also because he wants to show you that you can trust him. Just like a good father, right? I want to do good things for my children. If my children are suffering in a certain way, I want to come to their rescue. I want to come to their rescue because I love them, but also because I want them to trust me, right? God the Father does the same thing. He wants you to trust. But if you're anxious and you're worried and you're, oh, I I have doubts about my connections and degrees and certification, you're not going to be receptive. You're not going to be available. And and you're not going to hear the, you're not going to see the revelation of God in your life. You won't be receptive receptive to his grace. So what I'm essentially telling you is leave it alone. Do what's in front of you every day. Leave it alone. And I guarantee your life is going to unfold in the most miraculous ways. If you need a degree or a certification, the right time and the right person and the right circumstance is going to show you, hey, now it's time to get that certification. You trying to do it before you're supposed to do it, you just get in the way. But if it's supposed to be, it's going to show up on a silver platter in your life. You're going to be like, wow, this is crazy. How did this happen? I couldn't have imagined it any better. Serendipity, God's grace. Let God's grace carry you through your life. It's much less taxing. There's much less anxiety. And you build the virtue of supernatural faith. Faith in things you can't see or know. And that's what God wants you to cultivate in his life. He wants you to trust him. So you say, I still live at home. I want to move out next couple of years. You will. You will. You move out at the right time, in the right way, with the right person, with the right resources. It's not a big deal. The best thing you could do is stay relaxed, stay receptive, but stay diligent with the work that you're currently doing. And that's all, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.